Hey, what's up everybody? This is Scott from Oven Fresh Sounds coming at you from Brooklyn, New York. And in this video, I want to show you how I set up a session for mixing. So in this video, we'll be using Reaper, which is a great DAW. I've been using it for the past few years. And if you're looking for a new DAW to try out, you can try this out for free for 60 days. It's also super cheap if you want to buy. Uh, it's about $60 for a individual use license. And as long as you don't make more than $20,000 per year, otherwise it's $225. So super affordable. I highly recommend it. I've been using this for the past few years and I found it's, it's very simple to understand for me, but also at the same time, there's a lot of functions and customizable options that you can do. So the first thing I want to do is I want to load up my mix template. So we're going to go to our project templates. You can see I have many versions of my template. Uh, these are just older iterations. So I'll go to the latest, which is my version 5.1. And it's going to load up all my uh, pre-baked in effects that I have in my template. In addition to my mix bus stuff, it also has some effects like reverbs and delays and some space effects. So it takes us a second for it to load up. As you can see here, there's a lot of tracks here. Uh, most of these gray ones, or actually all these gray ones are my effects that I've found to be useful for mixing. I don't necessarily use them all on my mixes, but these are effects that I've found that work in certain situations. So basically at the top, I have my three reference tracks. I highly suggest mixing with references. Under that, we have our master bus, which then gets sent to the master track on the top, but everything goes through this. Uh, so we have our submix buses, which is all box, all drums, percussion, all music, low end, and high end. So our all drums is our skins and our close mics for the drum kit. And then the high end I use for overheads, hi-hats, and room mics. Uh, the others are self-explanatory. And then we have the rear bus, which if you follow Andrew Sheps, this is his parallel compression bus that he blends in gently to his mixes to give it a little more energy. It's something that he had got from working on his old analog mixing console, which is pretty cool. Sometimes I use this, generally I don't use it, but the option's there. And then below that I have all my effects like reverbs, I have different plates and rooms and halls, a lot of stuff to choose from, spring reverb, and some modulation effects like doubler, dimension D, micro shift, and some different delays that I have already set up, like a slap delay, double delay, ambient, and then we also have some time delays. And the other thing that's important to note for these effects I have baked in here is that these are all gain stage, so when I send a track to them, it's basically at the level that I want them to be at, and what I've found it has worked for me you know, over the past several mixes. So I think that's something to consider when you're setting up your template. And again, it's really important for me to set up these effects so I'm not wasting a lot of time recreating these effects mix after mix. Uh, if I use it once and I like it, I tend to copy it over to my mix template. And that's why you see I have so many iterations of my mix template is because I keep adding effects and, and also making changes and constantly updating this thing. All right, and below this is where we're gonna put our tracks. So again, above we have our master bus and our sub mix buses all in one compact place. And then as we go down, we have where we're gonna place our individual tracks. So we'll put them all in these folders. So we have drums, the high end, Vox, BGV, guitars, bass, keys, and percussion. Both the keys and guitars will get sent to the all music bus. And similarly, the BGV and Vox will get sent to the all Vox bus. And the way I have it set up is these are just going directly into the bus and I have them set up as the master parent send is disabled down here. And that's just so the tracks aren't played double. So it's not played here and then above. This is just completely like a dummy track that gets sent to above, if that makes sense. First thing we're going to do is we're going to load our tracks into my mix template here. So the way we do it is I've already unzipped the file that Warren had sent over. So we have one through 57. And then we also have Warren's mix here, which we can use as a reference while we mix ours. I listened to Warren's mix before and it's pretty awesome. So I don't know if we're going to be able to beat it, but we'll definitely try our hardest. All right. So what we do is we just click and drag into Reaper, into the bottom, into the empty track. And it asks if you want to import them as separate tracks or a single track. So by importing as a single track, this might work for you in a mastering situation. 
say where you're mastering an EP of three to five songs, or if you have an album where it's 12 songs, it's going to import those one after the other instead of putting them on top of each other. But since this is a multi-track session, we're going to be mixing this song. We'll want to import them as separate tracks. So let's click that. All right, so now that we're all imported, first thing I want to do is sometimes when this imports, or actually all the time, it imports out of order. So we got 46 at the top. So I want to just pull that all the way down to the bottom. Just because when Warren printed these tracks for us to all mix, he had printed them on purpose. Also how he had them in the session. So let's keep with Warren's order and not try to mess with that. So next we're just going to select all the tracks that go to each bus and we'll move them to their respective buses. So Warren has a bunch of kicks here that will go to the all drums bus. And for now, we're going to go all the way down to track 27, which is this, the splash for the drum kit. And we're going to move those all into the drums bus. Now, later, I'm going to move the hi-hat and the overheads and the crash into the high-end bus. But first, I just want to make sure that all these tracks are in phase. So that's for another video. But for now, we're just going to put them in all drums bus just to keep them all together. All right, and then the next track I see here is the bass. So we did drum and bass, so bass goes with the bass. And then some tambourine and tambourine verb. Those can go there. And we have the piano track. It's going to be a very important track in the song. So let's put it in the keys section. Next we have Les Paul, which is a make of guitar. So we'll put that with the guitars. And then next we have the strings. We have the cello, the string ensemble, the violin. So it goes all the way down to track 47. So what I'd usually do is I'd put it in with the keys section. I usually reserve that for other instruments uh, other than guitars. But in this case, since we have so many string instruments and the keys play an important part on their own, they kind of drive the song. What I want to do here is I'm going to make another submix bus. And this is going to be called strings. So I'd gone a little quick there, but what I had done is press control T to make a new track, which I did. And then I called it strings. All right. So now we're going to highlight all our strings tracks and drag that up into the strings folder. And let's choose a color here. One thing I have here is that in Reaper, I've customized my menus. I've actually imported a menu set. Uh, from another user. So I highly suggest that. I'll put a link below. What it basically does is it's organized all the menus to make it a little easier to navigate. So we'll go to color and let's set to one random color. All right. And it's kind of a lime green color. All right, cool. And then next we have the vocal followed by a bunch of vocal effects. I've worked on a bunch of Warren songs now. So I'm familiar with these. One is the Echoplex. Then we have the H3000, which is some pitch shifted vocals uh, to give a little more space and width. And then we have an Echo Plate and Vocal Magic. All right, so let's, I'm going to move those all into the Vox bus for our lead vocals. All right, and then we have our chorus dub, dub harmony aligned, which is cool. So it seems like Warren had done some editing in his production here, which is cool. That saves me a step. Because basically what I'll do is when I first get some tracks is to do some editing work, either in, say, Revoice Pro or Melodon. Revoice Pro for if you have a bunch of stacks of vocals, you can tighten them up pretty quickly. And also you have Melodon, which you can do your, your tuning. All right, and next we have... Warren's mix. So I'm going to pull that up all the way to the top to our first reference track. Looks like I lost it there for a second. All right, so I'm going to put it in reference one. Now, the way I have this set up is this is getting sent to the master bus to channels three and four and channels three and four don't get sent to the output. So the purpose of this is 
in case I want to use this for EQ matching, I can send this into my bus and then send it through, say, FabFilter Pro Q2, where it has EQ matching function with the sidechain. Or I could send it to Ozone 7 as well and do some EQ matching. But for now, we'll throw it up there. Um, later, I'll probably want to bounce those into one track and then load those into M Compare or Magic AB, whichever your uh, comparison plugin of choice is. Okay, so now that we have all those in their respective folders, I'm going to set up some colors now. So you can see I already have a color scheme baked into my template here. So I'm going to select all the parent folders. And through my menu set, right click and go to color. And there's a function that says set children to same color. So click that. And that does some magic behind the scenes and changes the color to all our tracks to the appropriate color, which is a pretty beautiful thing. I'm just going to reorganize this and throw the strings underneath the keys. All right, and there we are. We're pretty close to ready to get started. The next thing I want to do is just make sure that we're gain stage properly. So the way I do this in Reaper is I have an SWS extension. I can put a link in the, the notes below for you to check out. But there's an SWS extension that allows me to normalize to a specific DB level. So what this is going to do is behind the scene, it's going to adjust the input level that will be going to the effects. And now this is going to be important for one, when I press play, this isn't going to say like all these tracks are super loud, recorded super hot. It's not going to clip my mix bus. And the second thing is I want to hit my analog plugins at the right level. So the level I found that works for me for this sort of track count is to normalize to about minus 12 dB. What I want to do is hit control A and select all these tracks. And then I set up a shortcut, a keyboard shortcut, to get to this normalize items to dB value to control shift N. And then I'm going to type in minus 12. So that's going to normalize all the tracks to minus 12. All right. So then you see that all the tracks got smaller. So obviously these were recorded hotter than minus 12. Uh, so the next thing is I just want to make these waveforms a little bigger just so we can see what's going on a little better. So how I do that is press shift and the up key. And we want to get just to the point before it starts crossing the boundaries on the top and bottom of the track. So that was too much. So let's go back a little bit. And it looks like we reined it all in there. So there we go. All right, so we're pretty much ready to go now. One more thing I'd like to note is this Reaper theme that I'm using. Uh, I think it's pretty cool. Uh, you get a lot of functions in a pretty small real estate. So in this track manager view, especially for mixing, we have the volume knob, uh, a width knob, which is pretty cool and useful. Uh, we have the pan, our input output, our effects, and it actually has a button for our track envelopes for once you get into automation here, that's very useful for me. And then you have your mute and your solo. And then it has a, a big meter for your levels, which is cool. And then if you expand it some more, you also get a big fader. Since I've started using this Reaper theme, it, since the, the volume knob is so small, it's actually got me used to using my fader port more, which has been a lot of fun to get a little more hands-on mixing. So that's cool. To show you the theme I'm using here, we go to themes is the Apollo 4 B1 theme. So yeah, I highly recommend you check this out or you can check out some other themes there. I've also got some other loaded in here that I tried out, but I found the Apollo 4 theme is pretty awesome. So highly recommend it. All right, so that's about it for this video. Thank you for sticking around. I hope I didn't bore you too much with setting up a mix session, but I found it's pretty valuable to, to learn from other mix engineers and how they work and what their workflow is. So if you like this, please comment below. Uh, you can like this video and also you can subscribe to my channel if you'd like to join me on this journey as I mix this song. Uh, in the next one, we'll actually be listening to this song. So I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.